So I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how do I find out what I would put in the sphere? How do I make the relationship between the word that's in the sphere and the ideas that I put into it? And then also questions about how do I make each one of these spreads, each one of these relate to another one and how do I generate new ideas from it? So I figured what I would do is I have this trail of thought that I'm following now, just like I did with the white rabbit. Conversations that I've been having with people and synchronicities, then I start to pull it all together and then I come up with an idea to start notes around or I have a visual of what this might look like. And in this case, I had a visual of what this next thought form was gonna look like for issue three and it is the vector equilibrium. And it's really because I've been exploring this idea of doing six moves. This is something that I have I came across and I relate it to Buckminster Fuller and the vector equilibrium. I came across it probably maybe almost two years ago. And so I've been trying to play with the idea of having these outer seed words that are in the quantum memoir. These ones here that do not have the seed words in them as potentials, as opportunities that you might move into and put energy into kind of like a mind map so that you can get information that relates to the purpose like perhaps your goal or something that you're trying to achieve so what I'm doing is I'm following this trail from doing my you know my daily tarot telling me that I should show my process to then incorporating the alchemy of perception from the grammoire where I was coming across the octopus and these potentials that it is touching. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to go back to exploring the six moves. Instead of just looking at it as a game, what I'm intuiting, how I'm coming to this, this spread that I'm working on right now, is that instead of a game, I'm gonna make it another book. So I came up with a cover for it last night which is the vector equilibrium kind of merged with the fruit of life in there. So this is just my prototype cover for it, but it'll be like one of these books so that I'll have another one to work with. And this one will be about creating specific potentials in my mind, like positive things that I could put energy or action to so that I can see which one my intuition is guiding me towards doing, or perhaps it's a combination of them. So what I'm gonna do is take that, that breadcrumb trail of ideas that I'm gonna do this booklet, and I'm gonna incorporate it with studying this book that my friend just let me borrow, because you can see very quick, clearly that there's a vector equilibrium on here. And interestingly, it's in the vertical position, just like the fruit of life, Otherwise, you might normally see it in this position. So what I'm gonna do is I see this as a synchronicity, as something that I should dive into. And I already started to open it up and start reading it the other day. And as soon as I read the first, you know, the first chapter, like this first idea, not even the chapter, just the page, I realized, okay, I gotta take notes on this. So this is gonna be the format of what I do. I'm gonna to try to draw very precisely a vector equilibrium here, which is very difficult because you really have to have all of your spheres lined up in a very particular way in order for it to be so exact. And oftentimes when I'm doing my work, when I'm doing the actual creative ones, they're not, um, they may not be mathematically like, like geometry perfectly aligned with one another. I make it more of an artistic expression and just use my intuition and try to judge and proportion it by eye. So that's how I usually do them. But this one, I got out the roller and the compass, and I really tried to make it as precise as I possibly could. So there's kind of a different perspective and you know avenue that I'm coming from as I'm doing this thought for this uh, thought form for issue three of the grammar. So those are the the initial breadcrumbs. And then yesterday, I came across a video talking about transcendent function and it's a term by Carl Jung and I, I took some notes let's see I took some notes in my book here as I'm exploring this idea of potentials in six moves and it was about bringing things to you know several things together and it kind of goes along with the idea that people have been asking me how do I bring all this together and make it valuable well 
the idea of this transcendent function that I have come across is about merging the conscious and the unconscious. So really what you're doing in these thought forms is we're taking unconscious ideas and we're pulling them forward into the awareness and hoping to spark some type of self-realization, something that you can, you know, create alchemy within your life so that you can move beyond your shadows. So in this way that I can, you know, symbolically represent that would be in the vector equilibrium. So that's kind of the thought process of how I'm exploring using my artwork, using the symbology within this fruit of life pattern. So let's, uh, let's get to it. So what I'm going to attempt to do, <laughs> I'm going to attempt to draw in these lines here so that I can create this vector equilibrium shape within the fruit of life. So I'm just going to do that to just kind of relax and meditate and see what kind of thoughts come forward. So all I'm doing is I'm looking at the pattern here and then I'm looking at my spheres and I'm associating kind of like a word problem, you know, where in position of the spheres are to this shape where I might put my lines. So I'm just kind of, you know, not doing it in a very systematic way. I'm just doing it in an intuitive way. Whatever lines pop out to me to draw, then those are the ones that I try to find the space for. So there, that's about as exact as I can get it. So now what I'll do is I'll just go in with the darker pencil, a thicker pencil, and uh, really make it pop out. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the, the shell of it stand out so that it kinda has a three-dimensional feel. So I'm actually gonna kinda mimic this um, symbol that I created for the cover of the book and make that be part of this thought form that I'm creating for the grammar issue three. So I'm going to play with that a little bit. You know, I still have noises of the outside world, but I don't see a cement world. I see a very grounded world. So that's my vector equilibrium. This is the shell. What I'm seeing is that this book, it's sacred geometry and magic symbols. So perhaps this is a magic symbol. So I'm gonna create that in this thought form for issue three. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the drawing away or aside and I'm gonna get my notes out and I'm gonna start taking notes on the book itself so that this symbol, this pattern that I drew here, this one, holds the energy of the ideas I'm gonna consume into this note page that I've already started. And I'm not gonna go through the whole thing in the video, but I am gonna just start with this first one, which is the circle, and it representing the wholeness or the unity of life. So I'm gonna start there, and then I'm gonna read it, and I'm just gonna jot down notes for whatever seems significant to me. But first, I'm going to draw a circle. And a circle is two-dimensional, it's flat. You don't see a wholeness to it like you have, you know, this. It's very fascinating. So the symbol, the circle, that's what these are, the circles in the fruit of life. These are the things that it represents. Manifestation, consciousness, regeneration. It is also a protective symbol. So in a way, whatever kind of notions you're writing down in your quantum memoir inside these spheres, this is what you're providing to them is energy. They're a protective shell around that information. Kind of like that symbolism to that. But the reason I chose to call them spheres instead of circles is because I was really seeing them as something that was 
um, full that could be filled up and have an interior. So when I was thinking about, you know, what do I call this in this fruit of life pattern that I stumbled across? What do I call this circle? To me, it seemed most appropriate to call it a sphere because it's a sphere of influence. It's something that I'm filling up information into so that I can project it out into my reality. So now I'm going to move on to chapter two. And uh, when I'm all done, then I'll show you more. All right, so I'm really in, into this book. It's, it gives kind of like practical information of like what to do with it. And what it's saying about the circle is that simply put, the circle helps you bring a focus to the center of the problem and he then heal it as a whole. And so that's really kind of the idea of when I think of these spheres, that you have the purpose, that you're really bringing in a focus to whatever seed word is in that part of the quantum memoir. I'm here eating my little oranges, tangerines or mandarins or something like that. And I'm noticing like, look how similar those patterns are. This has that almond shape right in the center there. You see that? Isn't that fun? So a little bit more about this shape here. It's saying that it can may open the gate between your conscious and subconscious mind and guide you to the realms of endless possibilities. It sounds a lot like the six potentials I'm working on and then the connection of the conscious and subconscious mind that came up with this transcendent function about identifying potential when you have this meet this goal of including your conscious and your subconscious that you bring these two things together and that could create an attitude of change and I believe it was Jung that said that's the secret of alchemy is this transcendent function so perhaps the quantum memoir this thought form that I create is a transcendent function so that's it for chapter one Chapter two is gonna be about triangles. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sit here and kind of stare at this shape a little bit more and eat my other oranges. <laughs> so this is an interesting word to come across because I just put this in, um, well, I think my last thought form, maybe the one for the white rabbit, um, I had never seen this word before, but I often use this pattern, the symbol. The bugs are starting to get annoying. <laughs> one was on the book. Um, this one right here. And it's the um, union of the masculine and feminine triangles. That's what makes this unity. And you can very clearly see that pattern here. Well, if you look, you should be able to find it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for the day. I see that there's a few more sections in here of patterns that I want to add as notes to this page, but you can see the bugs are starting to come out because the sun is going down and it's starting to get annoying because they're biting me. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap everything up. And then if you want, just stay tuned because more than likely I'll post a follow-up video to this, kind of go over um, everything that comes up for me, <laughs> like this crystal evidently. And then this thought form will be in issue three of the Gramoir. And it's all coming about because of the work that I've been doing from this octopus page and the idea of potentials of coming up with this new booklet of six moves so that I could really start to look at the different potentials in these outer spheres 
and relate it to my purpose and then find out where I want to place my energy. So this is starting to be some research on how I'm going to put together this booklet. So stay tuned. <music>